I'm talking to Michael Chapman here, outside the Count House in Batalic. This must bring back memories, Michael. You know, I mean, this is always will be to me and Andrew a magical place. This, this, as I said earlier, this is the very spot that life changed in measure. So everything started good, from here. Yeah. yeah. And I had no idea what to do with the rest of my life, and I walked in here because it was raining, and I offered to play, and they gave me a job for the rest of the summer, and I've been at it ever since. And I never intended, I never had a plan to be a professional musician. I never thought people like me could be a professional musician, let alone write songs and get clean away with it. So you were just sort of scuffing around with the guitar? Then. I'd resigned from teaching. Uh, I was about to resign from a marriage. And uh, I hadn't got a clue what to do. I, I just had to get out of teaching. It was, I was the wrong man for the job. And I, I got out before I did any more damage. <laughs> And I was down here, came down here for a, a week's holiday, and uh, we were living in the back of an A35 van down Cock Valley. Is this you and Andrew? No, me and my wife. And uh, it, I was going to drive back home to Lancashire, we were living in Bolton, Lancashire, and it rained so hard, I thought, I can't drive overnight in this. And I followed a van that had a, can, a folk club sticker in the back window, and I just followed it, and I thought, I've got a guitar, I'll go up there and see if I can get out of the rain for a while. And I played half an hour, and, well, maybe not even that. I can remember it to this day what I played. I played The Train and the River by Jimmy Jufri. Thelonious Monk Around Midnight and a Jimmy Rogers Railroad song. Now, and folk clubs were such a broad church in those yeah. days that they thought it was magic. I mean, maybe nobody had ever done Thelonious Monk at the Count's house before, I don't know. See, this, this Hannigan remembers that Ian Todd was the guy who... Yeah, Ian, Ian ran it. And yeah. they had this, I suppose you'd call it positive vetting, that they'd let somebody sing one song, and if they were they, good, they could do two, and if they weren't... I don't, you I don't re remember I don't, that. Well, they, they, they obviously let me stay. I must have done something right. Well, this is, that it, when they first heard you, they said, oh, keep this guy on, yeah. and he had to fight his way down to the front again, because yeah. the place was packed. Yeah. And they asked you to stay on, and then Ian offered you a book in the very next day, I yeah, think. Yeah, he said, what are you doing for the rest of the summer? I said, what do you mean? He says, well, we're open six nights a week. There's an all-nighter on Saturdays. And at the end of the week, you'll get a share of the take. I said, well, lenders are five a year on. <laughs> so you had literally no money? No, I had a tank full of petrol that would have got me back to Lancashire. Right, right. And I drove back to Lancashire and dropped off my missus, and I said, I'm going out for some cigarettes, and I've never been back since. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm not, I shouldn't really be proud of, should I? <laughs>